Good morning and a very warm welcome to St. John's Church this morning. As you uh, may have noticed, it's, it would normally be St. Ayer's turn, as it were, uh, for me to, to film communion. Uh, but today uh, we're back in St. John's because, very sadly, uh, one of these St. John's church wardens uh, died this week, uh, Bill Butler, who most of you will know. Uh, and I want to, and so I want to celebrate here and also to dedicate this service to the memory of Bill. Since my arrival here uh, nearly two years ago, Phil uh, has been an absolute linchpin of all that we have been through at St. John's. He stands as a representative of the, of the history of the church in some ways. He's, he's stood with St. John's through its highs and lows of the last 30 years. Bill was a staunch Anglo-Catholic, a member of the Guild of Servers, a Franciscan, and someone who would self-describe as being stuck in his ways. But the reality was that Phil was actually a catalyst for change. While he mourned some of what, was, what we had to lose as we changed, uh, and whilst he was an important voice for tradition and stability, he also embraced the future, and he recognised the importance, above all, of growth, of church family, and of the gospel of Jesus Christ, above any of his individual preferences. In one of my last conversations with him, as we talked about the future for St. John's, he described his joy at seeing the congregation begin to grow again and his overriding feeling about what was happening, about whatever we were going to do again to change in the future. He said, I just want the family to stay together. Even weekly communion, so central to his faith, came second to being united with his brothers and sisters in the church, with his church family. Bill was an inspiration and a friend and a brother in Christ who will be greatly missed here in his church. So we begin by praying together the prayer of preparation, bringing our hearts before the Lord and allowing him to prepare us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we with our hearts open before God, we bring our hearts before the Lord and ask him to point out to us those areas in our life where he is calling us to change. Before we together confess our sins before him. And so we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we proclaim together in the great hymn of praise, Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we will have our reading and our sermon for today. Good morning. Well, today is Trinity Sunday. You may recall the passage in John's Gospel which explains the Trinity, where Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? And his disciples answered and said, some say you are John the Baptist, returned from the dead. Others say Elijah, others one of the prophets. And Jesus answered them and said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Logos, second member of the divine Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a divine unity of one and the same substance in an indivisible equality, and therefore not three gods, but one God, although the Father has begotten you. And so he who is the Father is not you, the Son, and you, the Son, were begotten by the Father, and so are not the Father. And the Holy Spirit is neither the Father nor the Son, but only the Spirit of the Father and the Son, himself co-equal with the Father and the Son, and pertaining to the unity of the Trinity, of which each member is co-equal with every other member, each acting inseparably and interpenetrating every other member with only an economic subordination within God, but causing no division which would make the substance no longer simple. And Jesus said, come again. Well, for anyone now trying to find that passage in John's Gospel, thinking, I'm sure I've never heard that one on a Sunday morning, you'd be right. That, of course, wasn't Peter's response. Peter simply replied, you are the Christ, the Messiah of God. Uh, that that I just read was actually one of the church fathers, uh, St. Augustine on the Trinity. Uh, and I think what you can see from that slightly bewildering um, paragraph is that that is a doctrine that has provided uh, theologians with a job for centuries now. The doctrine of the Trinity is actually not explained anywhere in the Bible and is rather the result of piecing together biblical clues about the mystery of who God is and what he is like. But as we can see that articulating that mysterious doctrine, the doctrine of the Trinity, can lead us into ever more impenetrable statements like that one from Augustine. But for most of us, if we're honest, we can leave statements like that to one side. What we really want to understand is, why does it even matter? How does knowing that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit help us, help me in my Christian life and walk? How does it help me to understand God better? Well, today I want to just very briefly think about why understanding God as Trinity might be helpful. And we could think about perhaps uh, that, especially in the middle of this coronavirus crisis. Why is understanding God as Trinity helpful for us in a crisis like that? And then we're going to close um, with a short period of meditation and prayer. Uh, Like me, some of you may be reeling from the news of Phil's death uh, yesterday, coming as it did uh, seemingly from nowhere. And some of what I'm about to say actually came out of our men's study group, which met on Friday morning. And that was a group of which Phil was a regular and key member, and he'll be greatly missed there. And so we're all feeling that sense of confusion, and it's into this confusion, into all the confusion of life, that a clear understanding of God as Trinity speaks peace and power for us. So how does it help us then to relate to God, to understand him as we talk about God as Trinity? Well, firstly, God is Father. I love those lines from our reading from Isaiah today. Isaiah says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span? enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Have you not known? 
Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. This is part of God as Father. God the Father, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving creator. The one who holds the mighty oceans in the hollow of his hand. What an incredible image when we are in the middle of the storms of life. The biggest of problems, the mightiest waves in our world. Whether that be coronavirus or economic collapse or war or whatever it is. They are but ripples in the palm of the Lord. No problem is too big for God. No issue will knock his plans for his world off course. We may not understand what is going on. We may not understand why we are going through it personally. But we can know beyond any shadow of a doubt that nothing is outside God's loving control. God is our all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving Father. But that thought may not help us very much when we are still suffering. Sure, God might fix things eventually, but he doesn't seem to be sorting out my life right here, right now. And that is when it helps us to remember, secondly, that God is God the Son. God made flesh and bone in the person of Jesus Christ, made like one of us. As the writer to the Hebrew says, talking about Jesus, for we have a high priest, Jesus, who is able to sympathise with our weaknesses. He is one who in every respect has been tempted as we are. In other words, Jesus, God the Son, understands what it's like to be you and to be me. A God who is all-powerful and all-knowing can, of course, know in an intellectual sense what it's like to be me and you, but he cannot experience it in the same way. But when God the Son came to earth, though he was in very nature God, he humbled himself and took on the appearance of a man. He became like you and me. And so when we walk through the suffering and struggles of life, when we come face to face with the reality of death, Jesus knows how we feel. Because he has been there. He lost his father. He lived a life of singleness. He experienced betrayal. He knew what it was to be poor. He knew fear. He knew pain. He knew death. When we struggle, when you struggle, Jesus truly understands. He is the Son of God, made flesh and blood and born into our world. But perhaps even that sometimes isn't enough. If God won't intervene from on high to change our every situation to our liking, yes, it is helpful to know that he walks alongside us, that he understands what we're going through. But you may still feel like you just cannot get through it in your own strength. And that is where it is important to be reminded that thirdly, God is God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised to send the Spirit after he returned to heaven. And as Christians, we believe that God has poured out his Holy Spirit upon us, on all those who follow him, to empower us to live for him, to give us strength to face whatever it is that we are going through, whatever it is that confronts us. God has poured out his Holy Spirit on all of us who follow him. Hallelujah. And so when we say at the end of each service, for example, in the blessing, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
these things, they're one reason why it is important that that statement is true, that God is Trinity, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God. But a God who also understands you and walks alongside you. But a God who has also been poured out into your hearts, giving you the strength to live for him and to confront whatever it is that is facing you. So as I close, I want to spend a bit of time in quiet. And let me encourage you in the quiet, firstly, to bring to mind, to bring before God the things that are on your heart and mind, the things that are confronting you today. Perhaps it is this global crisis. Perhaps it is the recent news of Phil's death. Perhaps it is financial worries. Perhaps it is your mental health struggles or loneliness, feelings of isolation. Whatever it is, bring it to mind now and hold it before the Lord. And as you hold it before God, remember firstly, God is God the Father. Whatever you are worried about, whatever it is that's in your mind now, remember it's not too big for God. He can and he will bring you through it. He may not fix it. Some things like the death of those we love cannot be fixed in that way. But he will sustain you through it. And no matter what it is, he will still be holding the universe, holding our world, holding your world in the palm of his hand. And so we pray. God, our Father, I place into your hands all my worries and concerns. I choose to trust you to trust that you are big enough and loving enough to sustain me through anything that I will face in this world or the next. Amen. And then remember too that God is God the Son. He is God made flesh. God who has walked our path who knows what it is to suffer pain and sorrow, to experience fear, to face problems that look too hard. And as he walked the path of this human life, he will walk beside you as you walk that same path. And so we pray. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, in my weakness, in my sorrow, in my fear, in my pain. Do not cast me from your presence, but take me by the hand and walk with me through the sorrows and sufferings and the joys of this earthly life. Amen. And finally, remember, God is God the Holy Spirit. If you feel at the end of your resources right now, remember that God will give you, by his Holy Spirit, all that you need. And that's not... A simple platitude. This is a deep and powerful Christian truth. Believe it. Meditate on it. And allow God to make it a reality in your life. And so we pray. Holy Spirit, breath of God, fill me anew. Strengthen me. Empower me to live for you. Fill me with your love 
your kindness, your joy, your peace. Holy Spirit, I place my life into your hands. Amen. Finally, let me just say, Phil Butler was a godly man. One of those who responded to the news of his death yesterday said, what a wonderfully genuine, kind-hearted, caring, cantankerous, stuck in his way, principled, devoted, humble, lovely Christian man he was. In my view, he was a pillar of the church and I always felt the benefit of his experienced view of life. I absolutely echo this. And our churches will feel his loss deeply. I would add that perhaps above all, Phil was someone who waited on God. He often responded impulsively sometimes. But he would always go away. He would wait on the Lord. And he would return with a view that had been visibly moulded by the Holy Spirit. And so I finish with the words of Isaiah today. As a fitting tribute to Phil, who was one of those who wait for the Lord, who has left behind his failing legs and taken eagle's wings as he goes to be with his creator. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now we come to our time of prayer, and we begin with the Collect for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as we continue in prayer, we pray for the world. With so many suffering throughout the world because of the coronavirus, and because of the chaos and uncertainty caused by the lockdowns across the world. We pray for all those affected, and especially for those who have lost loved ones. We pray too for those who have lost livelihoods and face uncertain futures. We pray for governments fighting to make the best decisions with limited information and limited resources. Lord, be with each one of these. And in the face of these difficulties, may we remain peaceful and amicable towards one another as nation states. Guard your world against finger pointing, against national self interest to the exclusion of compassion and justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our town of St. Ives and all those areas around. We remember especially those who are battling to survive as the tourism industry is decimated. We remember too those struggling with problems of mental health, those who are isolated and lonely, those who are fearful for the future and scared of the virus those who are sick, those who are facing death. We ask, Lord, for your provision and your peace to be upon them. And we pray especially for all those who are known to us personally, who are suffering or who have lost loved ones, bringing all of those known to us before you in a moment of quiet. Lord Jesus, would you walk with each one of these through their suffering? Holy Spirit, give them the strength to face whatever it is. And Father Almighty, would you change their situations and bring them out the other side? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we remember before God with thankful hearts those who have died. We praise God for all that they have brought whilst they were still with us. And today we remember especially Phil Butler.
and we pray for his family and friends as they mourn him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in your hearts. In rem eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was broken for you. The blood of Christ was shed for you. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.